Okay, this is the second unit on the machine learning and cloud services um, um, lectures. Uh, this, this unit is a short unit on some general points in optimization. I mentioned in the previous unit that actually sort of everything is optimization. Machine learning is optimization, living is optimization, society is optimization, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Evolution is optimization. So, and um, there are actually various approaches to optimization that reflect these different um, different uh, ways of doing optimization in the real world. So, initially, we will discuss in this uh, lesson optimization in general. We will do a little bit of special specific specific specificity to clustering. All right, so if we look at the general optimization problems, they start off with a function, E. I use E because E sometimes stands for energy, and energy is always being minimized by, by nature. So uh, optimization problems have a strong physics um, flavor to them from time to time. And we can always make optimization a minimum. You just take the minus sign if it's a max of a if a function has to be maximized, you take its minus sign, it has to be minimized. In the most cases, even in very hard cases, E is guaranteed to be positive. This is the sum of squares. That's true in, we saw chi-squared, deep learning, and so on. Um, we have uh, two types of problems, continuous parameters, such as the cluster centers. Now you often use a technique called expectation maximization. And then discrete parameters, such as the assignment problems, classifying things as uh, yellow or blue, or polar bears or cats. Uh, then there's a technology, I mean, a method called genetic algorithms, which is particularly well uh, designed to, for discrete parameters. Some methods, if you have a function, you want to minimize it. There are some methods, which are the ones that are used most often, which just use function evaluations, and then so sort of explore the space. I mean, think about hills. Um, you either can look at the height of the point on a hill, or you can look at its derivative, where where the uh, hill is moving down downwards the most. Um, so some, however, just use the um, function value, and they see which direction is downwards by just calculating the function near, uh, for points near the one you start with. Uh, some methods use first uh, derivatives. Very rarely you use second derivatives, because in, um, in um, these squares problems, at least you don't need the second derivative, because it can be calculated from the first derivatives of the things that are squared. Um, there is a method called steepest descent, which is a so-called greedy algorithm. It just goes straight down the direction, and so of which goes down the most, the fastest. Uh, it always decreases the energy, but can get stuck in local minima. And you have to use techniques such as uh, stochastic gradient descent to try to avoid that. Um, another very different method is annealing, which um, combines. Um, going up at times as well as going down. Notice one dimension, which are line searches, are particularly easy. So several methods choose a direction and look at the minimum of that, down that line. Uh, say the fastest method, Newton's method, which calculate eventually the second derivative, which as I mentioned is usually a function of just first derivatives. That method almost never works without very sophisticated uh, um, Choices of algorithm to make certain it doesn't diverge. Uh, that's because um, if you have second derivatives which are small, they encourage very large shifts, which cause you to go outside the place where that expansion is valid. Uh, there are constraints. You're trying to find the, um, I don't know, the maximum performance of a computer subject to the fact it doesn't use too much um, power. That's a constraint, and you usually use, use convert constraints, say, the into penalty functions, that if your constraint is violated, you take thing to be optimized plus a penalty function, but the penalty function gets very large if the constraint is violated. Here we have some examples, which effectively a lot of which we looked at. 
We have clustering where we're optimizing the position of the cluster centers to minimize the least square sum of the uh, particle position minus center position squared. Uh, if we were looking, working with our friends at Kansas increases, they have snow layer data. We have to find the layer which are optimized layers that we produce the observed radar data. In dimension reduction, which I mentioned as multidimensional scaling, we assign a 3D position to each point to minimize another least square sum of the original distance minus the distance in the Euclidean space or squared for every point pair. Uh, if you do Google web search, I mean, or Bing web search, that finds the web pages that are nearest your query. So the thing to be optimized is satisfying your query. Recommender systems. Well, Netflix wants to, you know, or your Amazon or what have you want you to spend as much money as possible. You want to find the movies or books that uh, are nearest your interest. And so the recommender system combines those two goals in some way which is not entirely clear. Uh, in deep learning, we're optimizing the learning of features of faces and things like that. And all of this, as we've discussed, needs to define distances or vector spaces. And these distances and funny spaces we'll discuss uh, in a later lesson. Right, here's some very old slides I made in 1992, a talk I gave, I remember, at uh, Houston. And um, it's about optimization I gave. And I was focusing on methods which use some analogy with a different system, like a physics system. And I called it physical optimization and physical computation. So physical, physical, if you look it up in the dictionary, at least when I looked it up in 1990s, meant pertaining to nature. So it's not just physics, it's also chemistry and evolution and things. They're all pertaining to nature. Um, so simulated annealing is using annealing. Um, well, the analog of annealing, which is um, using the motion, the random motion of particles in a, in a material to, to use that randomization to ensure that that material doesn't get trapped in the local minima. Um, linear program is a very mathematical method, a very computer scientist method. Information theory is uh, sort of related to physics, and it usually studies the proper the entropy of a system. Neural nets, mean field theory. That's a method which is effectively used in many methods to try to avoid complex, avoid the time it takes to anneal by calculating approximate values. Tempering, that is a, a more sophisticated annealing, which is actually used in the real world and also in optimization methods. Annealing, deterministic annealing is simulated annealing combined with the mean field theory to get a very fast uh, annealed solution. Heuristics are just all of any any approach that uses an analogy to get an approximate optimization method. So we have these various methods of physical computation, cellular automata, and complex systems alike of that. I say physical pertaining to nature optimization, genetic algorithms are related to evolution, simulated annealing to physics, neural nets to biology, information theory to electrical engineering. Elastic networks, which is a physics uh, approach. We'll, uh, um, those are no longer used. They're rather specialized technique for the traveling salesman problem. And deterministic annealing is also physics. Heuristic is just a, is a general term for using an approximation customized to a particular problem. Combinatorial optimization is mathematics. And expert systems are computer science or high level reasoning. They're just using knowledge and building knowledge networks and making deductions from that, like IBM Watson does. And you can see this, I taught, this actually I retaught in the class in 2002. And it originally came from 1992. So as I mentioned, nature solving optimization problems. Species are evolving to optimize the survival of the species. And so that's an optimization problem. The G and nature uses genetic algorithms to, to control the evolution of species. On that hand, nature is also trying to 
make, uh, I don't know, uh, early mankind avoid getting eaten by lions by recognizing the lions are dangerous and doing something to escape them. And that's not genetic algorithms, that's interpreting, uh, doing effectively image processing to realize there's a lion and you have to run away from it. Notice the physics laws can usually be formulated as a variational methods. Variational method is an optimization problem. <coughs> and often you combine methods. For instance, if you look at, you know, we're trying to build the human race. Well, uh, in, in the short time scale, we're using image processing, um, deep learning and things like that. On the long time scale, we're using um, genetic algorithms. So we use different methods. And it's also worth noticing that, um, um, that uh, when you t take expert systems, that's an example of people reasoning with their brains. And that's a sort of a different type of optimization approach. You're having a debate, you're comparing trade-offs and things like that. That's rather different from um, what you get from a direct optimization problem. Um, so we have high level reasoning, intermediate level vision, and low level vision. And all of these algorithms are used somewhat differently, have different trade-offs, they need different methods, and nature's evolved different methods for them. Well, this is a very old slide. This has been, I don't know why it's so, so this, was, this was actually done before PowerPoint existed, it's using uh, an older technology to make the slides. And here is an example of um, how nature, how uh, physics systems, materials um, avoid local minima. If you um, cool a system very fast, then the energy function is like this, it's very jagged. So that if you then try to find a global minimum, you never would. You get captured in one of these local minima. However, if you're at a very high temperature, the, the um, energy function is very smooth and you um, can find the global minimum relatively easily. So the idea of um, annealing is you keep near this global minimum and you gradually lower the temperature so you don't actually put any local minimum between you and the global minimum. So at every temperature you find the global minimum. So you come down here and across here. And then you sometimes use the mean field approximation, that's what uh, essentially neural networks do, and elastic networks do to um, find the, and to avoid the very time consuming statistical methods or else these quantum entanglements that do annealing. So they, all of these methods have different trade offs. They're all needed. I mean, I say the fact that nature has designed so many methods. And they've obviously nature has found that different methods are better at different problems. And um, expert systems do complex cosmic things on small data sets. You're just arguing about overall issues. Neural nets do simple things, light up neurons on large data sets, and they're actually paralyzed very easily. Notice that um, when you have a discussion between people, and once you get you know, three people having a discussion is rather difficult. It's actually, even with two people having a discussion, it's difficult to get an agreement. And the more people you have, the harder it is. In fact, when you have meetings which have too many people in them, nothing ever happens. You can never make a decision because you can't get a consensus with lots of people around. Uh, combinatorial optimization is, an, is a standard approach in computer science, and that says look at all possibilities. You have a function that's uh, uh, depends on some parameters, just look at every value of the parameter, which is possible if the parameters have discrete values. And you find the exact minima, but then the time is exponential on the problem size. Then, <coughs> then you actually, in, for combinatorial optimization, they're okay for small problems, for large problems, such as the traveling salesman problem when it's big, and you use heuristics to solve it. Um, uh, um, by clever techniques, which actually can solve quite big problems, not huge problems. Um, physical optimization, if you like, is a general heuristic, and it's particularly suitable when we only want approximate results. Here's an example of um, how you use the elastic net to solve the traveling salesman problem. Um, 
So what do we have? We have um, cities. These are the red dots. And we want to find a path uh, from one city to which passes through all the cities, which is minimum in length. And the way I've drawn the city, the answer is obvious. It's just around the edge here. Yeah. Um, but the way you do it is you have um, beads. These are the blue things, which are actually equal number of beads to cities, and they and you just um, you um, reduce. You have you build a little model. You have springs. You have forces between the beads trying to bring them together. That's equivalent to making the path shortest. And then you are, then each bead is attracted to each city, and so you get and then you solve the resultant. So that's. You basically let these different trade-offs fight against each other, and eventually you will get a solution that is hopefully good. This is a heuristic; it doesn't always work. Um, and here's an example of um, how you do this, and he shows how, at, uh, as you increase the force to the to the cities, you start off with a with a solution which is very very fast, but doesn't actually go through the cities. And then it eventually ends up like this with a pretty good solution. These are two different uh, problems. And this is a famous paper by Hopfield and Tank, which uh, did this work. 1987, Nature. Uh, when you can use the same ideas of of uh, fighting off forces, making things short, the, the, which to solve navigation problems. So you want to find travel from one, one place to another, avoiding obstacles in the fastest possible time. You do that with forces attracting your beads to each other to shorten the time, and and uh, you repel, you attract yourself to the end point and repel yourself from the obstacles. And this, I used to work on this for. Large scale um, vehicle problems, trying to get lots of vehicles to travel down roads or across fields in a way that was efficient. So we have to uh, ask questions about the shape of the objective functions, the function E, and it can be different shapes. It can be very smooth, and it's easy. It can be also very jagged. That's when you need tempering. That's very hard. Um, and you have to ask whether the minima, whether the local minima are correlated with the global minima. And then each global minima has lots of associated local minima by changing a few things. And we need to know whether we need an exact global minimum or an approximate minimum. And do we have? And we need some have some measure of error. And we have to know whether we want them. Minimize the worst case, the, or whether we want to minim, we want to minimize the average um, deviation. Those give you, those you, those are, yeah. Minimizing the average is typically easier than minimizing the worst case. Here's some pictures of shapes. Here's this one at the top left is the easy shape. If you put a ball on this surface, it will always roll to the global. Minimum. Here's a pretty hard problem. It's got lots and lots of local minima, and even when near the correct local minima, there is a false one here, uh, trying to stop you from getting here. And we can look at this in a different type of way over here in my 1992 talk, where we have global, local. This is a jagged energy surface. And that this one is not this, the, the methods to solve this problem are easier than the methods to solve this problem, where we have what we have huge. These are minor hills between local and global. These are giant hills, huge steps from the local to the global. Typically, you have to address this by doing a loop over possible initial conditions. We saw in the um, in this, there's the um, slide set F that um, that, um, that we sometimes get the wrong answer. That there's local minima, 
And uh, K means always was a minimum, but we saw examples where we got the wrong answer, uh, even in quite simple cases. And we solve that, and we don't solve it, but we reduce dra drastically by just running in the Python solution 20 different uh, k means solutions with different initial conditions. Here's a picture of annealing. <coughs> Here's a blacksmith just hammering it, and he's hammering it to try to get at a, at a when the system is hot, the, the particles are moving around a lot, so we want to. Uh, Avoid pass in here. Here, in this thing here on the right, the particles have got in the wrong place, and so you get this sort of um, actually quite pretty colored structure because the, it's not an irregular lattice. With annealing, what you do by basically making certain the particles at high temperature wander around and find the right place. And uh, we use fluctuations, the natural fluctuations which happen at the finite temperatures. That's what this blacksmith here is doing. Quantum computing is obviously out of scope for this class. But quantum computing has a special case, quantum annealing, which is pretty interesting, which is a different type of way of fluctuating from a local minima to a global minima, which is different from the temperature fluctuations. It's quantum fluctuation, because you have mixed states. And here I've actually effectively shown you this picture before. In the 1992 version, here is a um, one I drew quite recently, so it's much prettier, less distorted, and we can see how that at high temperature we go down to the global minima, and then we track the global minima, whereas if we did it at a finite temperature, we will get trapped in local minima if we start with we're up here. It's very difficult to get from here to here because there are multiple local minima. So we need to do it at a high temperature, or which everything is fuzzed around when we don't have nearly as many of and in fact at infinite temperature, we have no local minima. Just one minima. Uh, now there are a lot of these methods are greedy algorithms. You take an at any one, you do iteration, and every iteration step, you go down the direction which uh, reduces the energy by the most amount for a given step. So we have iterative algorithms, and um, this is, you know, you even see that in the, in the discussion of things like the stock market. You're saying, is the, is the company making short-term decisions for short-term gratification, or are they making long-term investments, like putting money into, into infrastructure, which won't pay off initially, but uh, will actually handicap them, because it will take money. Um, uh, and they get criticized, and their stock actually goes down if they take global long-term steps. And this is generally true of life as well. The difference between short-term and long-term gratification is non-trivial. All right, so that's the end of this particular lesson, and we have just one more in this unit. <coughs>